Welcome to Black Docs Talk. I'm Dr. Jermaine Hockstrom. And I'm Dr. Jeremy Hockstrom. And today we're going to be talking about black historical figures. All right, so first up is Dr. Daniel Hale Williams. Mm -hmm. So Dr. Williams was one of the first physicians and black physicians to perform a successful open heart surgery in 1893. So let me tell you how he got there. So he was born in Hollidaysburg, Pennsylvania in 1858 and was one of seven children. Seven children. At age 20, he became an apprentice to a former Surgeon General for Wisconsin. And after his apprenticeship, he began to teach anatomy at Chicago Medical College, where he also earned his medical degree in 1883. Hmm. In 1889, the governor of Illinois appointed him to the state's board of health, but he didn't stop there. Even in times of deep segregation, Dr. Williams always believed in unity. He believed in a hospital where both black and white doctors could practice and where black nurses could train. Well, his hard work paid off when he opened the first interracial hospital and nursing school, which was Provident Hospital and Training School for Nurses in 1891. Well, it was one night in 1893 that a young man came to Provident Hospital in critical condition after being stabbed in the chest. This is when Dr. Williams truly put his skills to the test and went to work. Suspecting structural heart damage, he exposed the heart and repaired several damaged arteries, one being the right coronary artery. And because of the quick actions of Dr. Williams, the young man went on to live for many, many years afterward. In 1894, Dr. Williams became chief surgeon of Freedom's Hospital in Washington, D.C., which was one of the most prestigious medical posts available for African Americans at that time. He then helped to organize the National Medical Association for Black Professionals who were not allowed to join the American Medical Association during those times. And finally, in 1913, he was the first African American to be inducted into the American College of Surgeons. Wow. Yeah, so Dr. Very Williams clearly had a lot of groundbreaking work during really his did. times, I would say. And the thing is that, um, you know, when I see, when I hear the history of medicine and see mm -hmm. stories like him, uh, you know, African American college and right. the groundbreaking work in surgery out of all things, you know, it really definitely inspires me, you know, it inspires me to always wanting to keep pushing forward, to always wanting to keep breaking those, right. those barriers and um, overall, you know, just to help the advancement of medicine and especially for the advance, for the better health of, um, you know, the better health of people of color as a whole. So, wow, that's pretty interesting. Yeah. All right. Next up, we have Dr. Alexa Kennedy. She is the first black female neurosurgeon. She graduated from the University of Michigan College of Medicine in 1976. In 1975, she broke another barrier as the first woman and first African-American to be enrolled as a surgical intern at Yale New Haven Hospital. 1976, Dr. Kennedy began her residency in neurosurgery at the University of Minnesota which she completed in 1981, thus making her the first black female neurosurgeon. She then went on to complete a fellowship in pediatric neurosurgery at Children's Hospital of Philadelphia. Dr. Kennedy returned to Michigan where she would later become chief of neurosurgery at Detroit-based Children's Hospital of Michigan from 1987 to 2001. Under her guidance, the department gained national recognition and has consistently been ranked among America's best pediatric neurosurgery programs in U.S. News and World Report's Best Children's Hospitals list. Mm. Dr. Kennedy officially retired a second time in 2012 from practicing medicine, and she continues to advocate for women pursuing careers in medicine and neurosurgery. So once again, just like those that have come before us, you know, she has really laid down the groundwork for us. And for that, I really do commend her. Absolutely. And, and if I had the opportunity to actually meet her uh, one of these days, uh, that would be, I think, really actually amazing because yeah. it would be nice to have a, just a conversation with her just to talk about how medicine has changed from, you know, her early years of practice um, right. on, you know, till now, as far as the, the structure of medicine and, you know, the racial tensions that may have been and, you know, during that time and now, and I don't know, just really, be really nice conversation to have, yeah. I think. So, yeah. 
So thank you, Dr. Kennedy, as thank well you, for you, your thank groundbreaking you. thank work you. Uh, and yes. others, you know, just like you that have come up before us all, yes. actually. So we wouldn't be here without without either of these two definitely important not. historical figures. So definitely not. Definitely very appreciative. All right. All right. So that's it for today. So thank you all for watching Black Dogs Talk, Black Historical Figures. Hope you learned something. Yes. Also, please do like, share, comment, and subscribe. Please follow us on Instagram and Facebook at Young Black Physicians. Yep. And we will catch you in the next one, guys. All right. All right. See, See you. See you.